So folks, what I have for you is very fascinating, and it's a story of a MAGA goon who bit off far more than they could chew, and karma is smacking them back in world record speed. And we're talking about none other than Marjorie Taylor Greene, who recently, just like yesterday, took a shot at the MAGA mic, the current Spino speaker in name only. And while I do think that ultimately Mikey boy is done, whether it's today or tomorrow or next week, or he doesn't know it yet. The point is this immediate move may have backfired by Marge as Republicans are furious at her. Multiple house Republicans are furious at her doing this thing. She's doing it to get attention or raise money. Also media is calling her bluff, but what's really ugly for her is this is sort of reignited among some Republicans. Republicans, some scandalous rumors about her and the last speaker, Kevin McCarthy, of an affair like, you know, romantic, illicit nature. Pretty disturbing stuff. That scandalous, scandalous rumors from Republicans that are back like never before. And once you watch these clips, which Marge does not want you to see, I'm going to hit you with what Republicans have been saying, and it's going to knock your socks off. And Marge reminded us of it all because of her stupid move. I consider Marjorie Taylor Green to be my friend. She's still my friend, but she just made a big mistake. You know, trying to vacate Mike Johnson's. I totally oppose that. Listen, Mike is a very good man. It begins every day from the right place. He's deeply principled. And he's like he's like a brother to me. And to think that that one of our Republican colleagues would 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 call for his ouster right now. It's, it's really, it's abhorrent to me, and I oppose it. I stand with Mike Johnson. He is, he is maybe the only guy in history that, that could potentially perform and help us navigate through these very dark and challenging times when he has to deal with a, with a, a one-vote majority in the House of Representatives. He's got a Democrat-controlled Senate. And a, and a weaponized Democrat controlled White House. You got one guy that can deal with that. You know who it is? My brother, Mike Johnson. I stand with Mike. And I, and I, I expect my colleagues to unanimously oppose this uh, big mistake that was presented today by, again, a lady that I consider a friend. Sometimes friend makes, makes mistakes. and. In this case, Marjorie has made a big mistake. I stand with Mike Johnson. Um, tell us your, your logic here. Why is Marjorie Taylor Greene wrong? Well, you know, this is just very, uh, very frustrating in a lot of regards. The bill was very frustrating. You know, but if you step back and look, we are in divided government, and we have some individuals that just don't seem to get it. You know, I have a great relationship with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Her office is right next to mine. But, you know, we can't get 100% of what we want. And we've had some individuals that literally want to take their ball and go home because they don't get 100 percent of their what of what they want. We had one fellow in conference day before yesterday said, I haven't read the bill, but I know I'm against it already. So, yeah, I know there's frustration. It's been a long several weeks. But God, you know, I, I will tell you, Mike is doing the best damn job he can. He's working his butt off. And you can't get everything that you let want. Me, let me just ask you real quick. I, you know, I, let's talk about, you know, everybody wants to see, I, I think, more transparency in this process. You yeah. know, that's, that's what we all wanted. We're, we're sick of, oh, you know, you see all of this ridiculous stuff that they stuff into these bills to satisfy every special interest in Washington. Yeah. That doesn't seem to well, be developing. What, what is holding it back? I, I don't necessarily agree with that. But I will tell you, you know, we had the first time we cut spending. We, we cut non-defense, non, uh, me, yeah, non-defense uh, discretionary spending for the first time. First time. You can't do this all in one huge, big chunk. People need to realize that. You know, let me, and also, Rob, let me just tell you, talk back to this vacate measure. This was an asinine thing pushed forth by Matt Gates uh, because he had a, a rift with uh, McCarthy. And then he did also just uh, sadly enough what I just got a text not 30 minutes ago saying from Marjorie saying I'm wanting to raise money on this. Matt Gates raised money, money the whole week or, or the whole time he was creating chaos. 
This is not what it's supposed to be. This is not what adults in the room do. Congressman and rising star Mike Gallagher. Mike Gallagher only announced his resignation today. His actual last day is going to be April the 19th, which under Wisconsin state law is too late in the session for his seat to be filled with a special election meaning that Gallagher's deeply red district seat will remain vacant until January. And all of this is to say that come April 20th, the House Republican majority will have a one-vote lead. And again, the Republican Party isn't exactly the poster child of unity right now. Last week was supposed to be the big annual retreat for House Republicans, the retreat where they discuss their legislative priorities and they strategize for the months ahead. I say it was supposed to be that because more than half the House Republican caucus just didn't show up. One Republican member of Congress anonymously told both Axios and Politico, quote, I'd rather sit down with Hannibal Lecter and eat my own liver. That is one dissatisfied worker right there. And then today, the far right congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene filed a motion to oust the Republican Speaker of the House, her speaker, Mike Johnson from his position. And while I don't actually think anything will come of Representative Green's motion, at least not today, I do think the reasoning behind her motion is notable. She was upset that Speaker Johnson passed the spending bill today to keep the government's lights on. That was her big complaint. That you reject the big lie. Um, it seems uh, that the, the, the actual voting that happened today means we're gonna get a deal in the Senate, but again, the Marjorie Taylor Green motion to vacate, which is a sort of fake one, I don't even know what they want. They don't know what they want. The whole thing is such a mess. There's no unifying governing vision. All they can unify around is Donald Trump, which in some ways makes him more vital to them. But it, it seems to me that there's nothing binding the whole caucus together, no shared vision of what they want to do with the levels, levers of power. Well, Chris, I read the Marjorie Taylor Greene thing today as more of a warning shot. It's basically her saying to Speaker Johnson, if you step out of line again, I'm going to pull the trigger on this and you're going to have to find the votes to stay uh, in power. It's not clear to me that Marjorie Taylor Greene even has the votes today to remove Mike Johnson. I cannot name a single Republican who has come out and said that they would vote to evict him if that vote were to come up today. In fact, two of the, the GOP lawmakers who voted to remove Kevin McCarthy last fall, um, I spoke to them in the last few days. That's Bob Good and Matt Gates. Both of them told me uh, well, Matt Gates said he explicitly opposes a motion to vacate the chair and remove Mike Johnson. And uh, Bob Good, who's the current chair of the Freedom Caucus, uh, said he's not going there, that his, you know, he was not uh, going down that road today. He just wanted to talk about the policy of the bill. And in terms of the, the governing fractures you pointed out, that's another serious problem here. I mean, you saw that a majority of House Republicans voted against that government funding bill today that Speaker Mike Johnson struck with Democrats. Again, remember, this is a divided government. They're not going to get what they want. You can't but That's change a huge deal. To, to lose a majority, to lose a majority of your own caucus, like it functionally, it renders them a useless majority because you can't actually pass a thing with a majority of them. Yeah, that's been the, the problem that Speaker Johnson has had for a while. He can't even pass a so-called rule anymore because, you know, enough of his members will defect on this procedural process that had been so rote that was barely, barely known to people. He has to do this so-called suspension of the rules, which requires two-thirds to get anything done. And that required a two-thirds majority today. They needed 67 percent of the chamber. They got 68 percent of the chamber wow. for that 1.2 trillion spending bill. That bill almost failed uh, because of that of the Republican infighting. But nevertheless, it did pass, which is important. He got it through. Now it's gone over to the Senate, which is struggling to get agreement to pass this. We might be stumbling into a government shutdown tonight, Chris. The one thing this divided Congress for all its problems was able to do up until now is avoid a government shutdown. It looks like that's going to end tonight after four stopgap bills, after months and months of negotiating. We're halfway through the fiscal year. I don't think I've, I've ever seen an appropriations process quite like this before. So, so the reality for, for the House right now is um, Marjorie Taylor Greene is Kevin McCarthy's parting gift to the House of Representatives. And it's a gift that keeps on giving over and over and over again, uh, where to the point where you'd want a bad penny in your pocket. That's how, that's how useful all of her antics are. So now you have Mike Gallagher um, also uh, stirring the pot, Mariana, by saying, you know what, I'm not gonna run for reelection. And then, oh, you know what again? I'm gonna leave before the term is over. Oh, you know what? Even better than that, I'm going to leave after the period that my state can replace me and, and put someone else in the seat so we can have a 
better majority. So now we're down to one. One member deciding not to go the right way, if all the Democrats hold it. And, and I would argue most Democrat, in most situations, the Democrats are going to hold as a block on any vote. They've been like good about speaking. Speaker McCarthy has kept his caucus together. Pardon me, not Speaker McCarthy, Lord. Uh, uh, Hakeem Jeffries has, leader, yeah, Hakeem Jeffries has kept his caucus pretty tight. Yeah. What's your read on how uh, Speaker Johnson navigates this new terrain with just one vote, mm -hmm. literally, between getting a bill passed and keeping his seat. Yeah, I mean, it is going to be incredibly difficult. And Johnson has said that this himself, just how hard it is to govern an ungovernable majority, not to mention the fact when it's literally. So he's down referred to, to his own majority as ungovernable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love and it. it's going to get more complicated. But here's the thing. They have they as in House leadership, Republican leadership has been able to figure out how to pass things without their majority. Mm -hmm. The House, as we know it, with Democrats. always with Democrats, has always passed things through simple majority, right? right? That's it. They are now suspending that rule, that procedural hurdle, and saying, no, we need two thirds of the House to just be able to do all of these things. That's why we've seen the House actually be able to quote unquote govern on these bigger questions. But that has really, really, really cannot even stress how much it has upset the far right. Can can I just push back on one? Well, not push back, but I mean, have, has this house governed, though, or have they just barely funded the government every time it needed to be funded? Yeah. When it comes to the must pass need to address or okay. the country's going to collapse, governing. they have been able to <laughs> reach that point. But to your point, though, House Republicans haven't even been able to pass their own bills that they care about mm. because they just don't have the votes. They won't be able to impeach Biden because they do not have the votes. And, and we're no starting evidence. to hear Well, that. that's why yes, I, I thought no it was evidence. interesting with Mike Waller saying in, in the clip we heard that, you know, we've got the issues on our side. I'm like, dude, really? I mean, because if you did, then I think this would be easy, wouldn't it? So it's not the complication of, you know, the issues. It is the complication of an ungovernable majority that is fractured across the board on not just what they want to put out there, but even how to negotiate with an administration Administration that arguably is in a much weakened position, given where the president's polls numbers are and things like that, they seem to keep giving life to Democrats on a number of these issues. Yeah. And now I will say that exact question of what does it mean to govern has actually spilled onto the campaign trail. We are seeing sitting members of Congress actually going out and campaigning against their own colleagues. Because when you talk to those, you know, like the Mike Lawler right. say, I actually want to govern, I want to pass bills. They're like, we need more rational people like that to make up our majority. You talk to the Freedom Caucus and someone like Matt Gates to say, no, 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 we could be a functioning governing majority if we had more of our point of view, even though that is a group that has <laughs> constantly threatened the pragmatic Republicans who are yeah, trying crazy to pass never bills. Well, I'm sorry. Michael, let's just pull up two headlines fr from this week. One, you have... Uh, House Republican budget calling for raising the retirement age for Social mm -hmm. Security. Then this, Popular. then this from HuffPo, majority of House Republicans endorsing abortion ban that threatens IVF. I mean, just to just put some color on what you said, that the issues, Michael, are not on their side. No, and, and, and that's that's the reality. I think that we there is. The, they're facing right now. Let's put it that way. The, the leadership understands going into this cycle, uh, this election cycle, they have severely disadvantaged themselves. Now, I so one of the things we're often seeing is like, why is Marjorie Taylor Greene going after Mike Johnson so hard? Even Matt Gates has said that while he's disappointed in many ways, he's not ready to take down the speaker. And Matt was the guy that moved heaven and earth to take down the last one. Frankly, um, probably even though they did similar things, passed similar types of omnibus bills and what have you. And what some Republicans are saying, and this is the sex scandal. Is that Marjorie is, is, as you can see, banging the speaker, the ex-speaker in this case. But remember, you carry that title for life, right? It's all, unfortunately, it's always President Trump. It's always Secretary Clinton. It's always Vice President Biden until he was president. So it's the Speaker McCarthy, ex-speaker. And this was a rumor that flew around a lot when he was actually speaker. And again, the thing with this is there's no substantiation here. But the thing about a scandal is it's a scandal even if it's only rumors, Somebody makes scandalous rumors about you. It's a scandal. So there's still a McCarthy Green scandal. And people are saying that she misses Kevin and loves Kevin and is infatuated with Kevin and wants him back. And now she's been exposed among the MAGAs 
for trying to make this move that's failing so far.